Hi, my name is Adam Neely, and here is my critique and exploration of One Finger Per Fret. Um, now, this is piggybacking off of what I said in my exploring safe left hand technique, where we were talking about taking our left hand, uh, letting it go loose, be held up by the shoulder, flip it over, get this sort of limp sort of thing happening in the wrist and arm and hand where everything's relaxed, and then taking the base and slotting it in, and that, that being the basis of our technique. One finger per fret goes against this in a lot of ways. Um, it was originally a guitar technique, and it works great for this guy. Um, but if we see it, see the scale lengths kind of compared against each other, we see that the end of the guitar basically occurs at the fifth fret of the bass, which is not coincidentally where I uh, recommend people adopting a full one finger per fret right here. Sweet. Now. What happens in this area? Now, if we saw this, if we did this neutral position and then slotted the base in here, we see that the hand takes the or the fingers take the span of two frets, or I'm sorry, three frets, um, very easily without strain. If you tried to stretch, if you tried to uh, go, excuse me, if you tried to go one finger per fret, you'd have to stretch your fingers. This isn't bad. There's ways of doing that with uh, keeping your hand relaxed and, and um, keeping your hand relaxed and everything free and all great and everything. Um, there's a little bit more mechanical nuance to it than a lot of people who are strong advocates of one finger per fret would ever give you, and I've never really seen these this sorts of things specifically discussed. I've seen a few of them. Um, the first is, um, in order to get your hand in this position, um, which is one finger per fret with everything relaxed, the wrist relaxed. You can see my wrist is nice and straight and relaxed. Got the fingers on all the frets. And by the way, this is a 35 inch scale, so this is even a little trickier. Um, you have to kind of approach it so that your elbow and your arm are almost on a perpendicular plane to the base. Um, you'd never be able to do this when you're coming at the base like that. You know, your wrist, your wrist would be bent and just not a good sort of thing. So you're kind of and I said this before in one of my videos, you're kind of thinking of it as a violin, you know, how a violinist holds it. That's basically the sort of idea, since if you think about it, the bass is actually going out and away from you, the same way that a violin does, and that the violin fretboard does. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is, when, when, when I'm playing one finger per fret down here, I'm using a constant sort of shifting of my elbow and my arm. A lot of people say that this is a thumb pivot, and I think that's a little bit of a misnomer, especially since in my left-hand video I said the thumb is actually going to be really pointed that way most of the time, so you can't really pivot up and down against it without bending the wrist. I'm thinking of it more as sort of a uh, arm and elbow sort of pivot sort of thing. Let me show you what I mean. Let me play um, an, F, an F minor, just F, F Aeolian scale. Um, which is kind of an annoying sort of thing um, to play, and you know, people just don't like playing an F for, for a lot of reasons, just because, or F minor, because of this position down here. But let me play it uh, in one finger per fret. Nice. Now let me look, or let's look at it from behind, and see what exactly my hand is doing. I'm almost making a circle as I'm going up and down, which is something that uh, when, I, when I was first experimenting with this, I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's cool. I never really expected that to be the most logical application of the uh, neutral position. Um, but you can see that it's sort of this general back and forth that you can um, really see. Like when you're down here with your first finger, it, your hand is in one position, and when you're up here with your fourth finger, it's in a different one. Um, anyway, I really hope that you sort of start thinking about these things and really, really um, forcing yourself to apply the principles of this neutral position when you're messing with one finger per fret down here because most people uh, just say, oh yeah, you just need to do the one, two, three, four exercises and the spider exercises down in lower positions and you get finger strength. Hooray! Finger strength is kind of, the idea that you need finger strength is kind of BS. Um, it's really just finger dexterity and training your muscles to move a certain way, not to create more, you know. When, when we're playing the bass, um, one thing that a Gary Willis video did once was that if you keep the wrist straight and you pull with your fingers, 
you can get a lot of tension there, way more than is necessary to play the bass. Um, like far more if you keep the finger straight, because it's actually the arm, it's actually all of this which is applying pressure to the bass. Your fingers are just going and using, um, they're the, the, the apparatus for applying the pressure. So don't take that advice to heart at all. Um, and if anybody is like saying, oh, Adam, can't you do the, you know, you're just saying this because you, you don't have the finger strength to do it, you know. I can do the spider exercises all, all day long down there. That doesn't mean anything. I could, this bass could be 37 inches long with like super high gauge strings and whatever. Uh, but the thing that's important is to knowing how to channel all of this into the bass. Anyway, I hope you learned something.